Ready? Yeah. And then one in the center. That's a pretty good hit, I think. Um, the one in the middle, I think it did. Oh, maybe not. That is the one in the middle. All right, well, it doesn't stop that, so let's see if the glass does now. Practicing the Trump response drill. Active shooter Trump response rally drill. All right. Corner. I just skirted out the bottom. Or no. It went through. All right, so these are the two plates. This is the porcelain, as it was a bit bigger. That's six by six or almost six by six. And this was more five by five. So just looking at the porcelain plate, we had a partial hit right here and here. And then this was like a, a dead on hit that hit good part of the tile. Um, and it did go through here, as you can see. This hit also went through and this one looks like it skipped out most likely. Um, the chronograph actually died or was already dead. I forgot to turn it off the last time I used it so the battery was dead. Now I didn't have a spare but this is what we were shooting uh, from previous testing. These are going roughly 3,080 feet per second. Um, maybe a little bit more because of how hot it is now compared to when we were testing these earlier in the year. So yeah, just expect roughly 3,080 for both samples close to that area, give or take probably like 30 feet per second. Yeah, um, seems to have like a really good, um, multi-hit capability. Most of this area is still good. Carbon fiber kept it mostly together, except for near the edge. And even if it is cracked under here, it at least feels solid compared to this area you can hear a bit looser this is the glass I have a tape though just so glass doesn't get everywhere it's gonna get everywhere either way but as you can already tell the glass stopped it compared to the porcelain the glass was thicker than the porcelain but only by about a sixteenth of an inch so I don't think it plays too big of a factor in its stopping capabilities but that is something to note just want to put that out there down here we moved up to M855A1 just to see if it could stop it and as you can clearly tell it could not we didn't start out with M855A1 just because I didn't think either of these would be able to stop it and I didn't want to compromise the 
bright face materials. So we just started with MA55. So yeah, as you can see here, MA55 went through, MA55 here, you can see in there. Pretty interesting. See M855A1. And this is the back M855 stopped. The A1 did go through. So just from this, we can tell that the pyroceram glass did do better than the porcelain. What's interesting is that this had sort of like an orange tint beforehand, and now that it's shattered, it looks a lot clearer, which is interesting. At least to me, I don't know if anybody else found that interesting, but it seems kind of weird what happened to the orange tint, and why did it only go away when it was broke? All right, it's pretty interesting. So I think even with a fresh piece, uncompromised plate, um, M855 most likely would have went through still. I'm just gonna flip this honestly. Okay, so the bottom portion didn't survive as well as the upper portions, it would seem. This is, however, though. I don't know if you guys caught that, but. One layer was glued with a UV resin because I intended to do the whole thing out of UV resin. I ran out and then the other layer was glued with epoxy I mean this is this is together pretty well still actually this is a pretty good piece I think relatively solid I would like to just take the rest of this out, but I'm not sure if this carbon fiber is going to let me. This sort of film layer is the UV resin, I believe. The epoxy resin is holding these two layers together, so that is definitely a better choice. At least compared to the UV resin I used. There might be some better UV resins, but from what I can see, the better choice to use is definitely epoxy when gluing the glass pieces together. Doesn't appear to be magnetic. Yeah, so not much remaining of the core. There was a few small pieces that were magnetic. This is 
what we got here. Mostly just very tiny pieces left of the core. So yeah. And we've got, I mean, a few decent areas left still. Epoxy resin definitely holds this together better than UV resin. Would seem. This is the back side of the plate. So entering the fiberglass the core actually could be in the fiberglass, actually. Some of it. M855 exited, so probably won't find anything there. I'm not sure if I can take this apart, though. It is delaminated mostly around the area, so probably, but this area might be hard to get through. It's down here in the corner. I'm sure you can see that. That is magnetic. You need this steel, most likely, part of the core. I mean, relatively, relatively close to the, I don't know, first three layers, maybe, after the glass. I mean, it's like right after the glass, basically. There's not much damage to the carbon fiber area here compared to the other one because didn't like stop as much, especially in the beginning area. I'm not really sure like where to start. I mean, as you can see, this appears to have stayed together a lot better. I don't know if that's because it absorbed less energy because obviously it couldn't handle the round or if that's just due to the material itself and its properties compared to the glass. But yeah, round one, two, and three. As you can see, the construction of the um, tile probably help to keep it in here. Hmm. It's interesting. There's a very, okay, I don't know how large it is, but it appears to be large. It appears to be a large piece of the core right in the hole. out the way might be able to take this whole thing out very very impressive plate adhesion if I do say so but other than that I don't know if you guys can see this See that like shiny piece in the hole right there? Right there. That is metal, I believe.
sure I pushed it any farther. Few pieces, in particular a larger piece, and there's this piece as well. It would appear I did not catch either of them, so that's great. Um, that is the hole. So it looks like the round just started to break apart. The tile at least stripped the jacket from the core. And then it looks as though the core just continued on. I have an extra piece. Just so you guys better get a better idea of the back. This is what the back looked like. I mean, this provided like amazing adhesion. Two nine thirty, depending on where you're holding it. Twenty eight. The thinnest portion. It's twenty seven, but on these like ridges. Twenty nine thirty. The glass. Off. I'm trying to get a piece that hasn't been spread out too much. 34. 34, 35, roughly. Just a bit of glue and tape, but other than that, yeah. Because on the final the final thicknesses when I measured them when they were undamaged but fully completed. This one was 0.80 and this one was 0.84, so 0 0.04 difference, which is less than a 16th of an inch. So we got 25 layers of fiberglass on each. Obviously you can tell the extra thickness came from the strike face, but I mean, I don't think in the grand scheme of things, less than a 16th of an inch played much of a role. Um, but yeah, if you could somehow get this design to be on the back of the glass, I mean, that could be a game changer. But yeah, that's basically it. So far, what we can conclude is that Pyro Ceram is in fact a better strike face material than porcelain. Um, we've also learned that wrapping these in carbon fiber is a viable option. Not sure how much of an impact it played, but it seems to hold, hold together pretty well, especially considering it's only one layer on the front and two layers on the back. So the front portion is really the most damaged portion it was only one layer so and additionally we've also learned that this sort of grid design raised grid design immensely helps with adhesion and yeah that's the video